Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey there, Z Nation fans! Welcome to another edition of the After Buzz Recap Show. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm not sure if I'm hallucinating this panel or not. Is this real life? <laughs> or is this just fantasy? No escape from Caught reality. Open your eyes. <laughs> I hope we're not on a landslide. We're pretty near the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it no was No escape rainy. from reality. <laughs> <laughs> we may have done that as karaoke on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me on the panel tonight, Katie Cohen. Hi, all my buddies. Roya Tahiri. Hello, everybody. Zach Wilson. Hey, guys. Welcome back. And I'm your host, Megan Salinas. Guys, we also have some wonderful, very special guests. Joining us is Connor Marks, who played Yuri on tonight's episode. Hey, hey everybody. Yay. Yay. And we also have executive producer Carl Schaefer. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, we're doing great. I'm doing pretty excellent. Yeah, so and we're certain that you're here. Are you guys I, actually here? Give me a give me a poke. As certain as we ever get. <laughs> are you real? <laughs> Sean in the booth. Check the method. <laughs> check, check, the check the oxygen. <laughs> are we asking the right questions? I just don't. I don't know. see a CO2 monitor in here. <laughs> I I actually, that's the problem. We I'm knocked it down earlier because we were I, working. I don't see one, and I've never noticed that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you really do learn things watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. But all in all, I definitely think this is one of the stronger episodes that we've had this season. It was emotionally engaging. I was kind of questioning what was real and what wasn't real. And and to an extent, you're at the edge of your seat. You're like, come on, snap out of it, Citizen Z. <laughs> Get it together. Just, can I just say I called it within the first five minutes? Because we were watching this together, and after we see Cassandra hallucinate that a rusty can is an energy drink, when we see Yuri show up, I'm like, are we sure he's not hallucinating the well, astronaut? Are we sure that he's not hallucinating well, all of this too? The USSR oh, is the USSR is no longer a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit it of a, a little, tip. <laughs> little problem right there. Well, and initially, I thought we were going to have an astronaut zombie because he walked away right as the scan was finishing and said no life forms detected. And so I was like, are we? Go-? And I wasn't sure if that just meant that somebody had already left the shuttle or if that meant that whatever was alive on there was no longer alive but was still shambling around. See, when the puppy didn't wake up, I'm like, that's not real. That was my thing. <laughs> puppy would feel it. Puppy would wake up and say something and stop snoring. That was my initial. Like, you said the can. I'm like, it's a puppy. I trust the puppy. <laughs> Even the puppy. I always wonder how, maybe you can answer this as a showrunner, when, when there is like a giveaway or a, uh, a surprise, some kind of secret that you're holding on right. to in the episode... Given that all the creators know what's going on, how do you try to balance what the audience knows or doesn't know and when you give clues and how much of a clue is too much? Well, I mean, it's all a balancing act that you're trying to do. I mean, part of the fun is people figuring it out. People like to be right sometimes in a mystery when they guess where it's going. And, <laughs> and, and we do try to hide the ball and we try and use your expectations against you. I think, you know, now everybody's such a savvy television viewer. I'm a um, terrible. You mentioned the thing about the Cassandra and the can, and it was very hard for me to not, in this moment, go, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had, I never noticed I didn't that. Even catch that. The well, writing was on the wall <laughs> or on the can. <laughs> there are some days I pick things up, and there are some days where it's like, "Really? <laughs> when did they say that? You mean they said that 30 seconds ago?" And uh... I mean, really, really. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a little like Vegas too. You have to let people win once in a while, otherwise they quit playing. So, you know, it's a you I have, like winning. You have to give the viewer that satisfaction of being able to stand up and go, I was right. <laughs> well, it makes you feel like you're all thinking on the same page. And... <laughs> but I, yeah. I do want to ask, what was kind of the idea behind this one? Because this is one of the, I think this is really the first episode that we almost get almost entirely dedicated to Simon and his character. And the prob- since probably the zombie dog way back in, mm-hmm. I want to say episode two. Episode it was two. episode two. 
So what was the idea going into this? Well, one? we were just looking for, we had such a great actor um, in DJ Qualls that we, we were looking for a way to have him have somebody to interact with. Um, and he, he was also very excited to have somebody to interact with, especially somebody as good as um, Connor. They had a great time uh, working together. Um, and he was getting as stir crazy as his character, just being the only guy, you know, shooting 12, 13 hour days. Uh, when it's just him, there's not even another, it's not even that he's just in every scene, he's in every single frame. There's not even another guy to repeat words to him. So um, he was very happy to have a, a, an episode to bounce somebody off of. But we also didn't want to have a character that came and stayed around or we necessarily had to kill. Or um, And I've always been interested in this notion of the third man syndrome, that when people are in extreme circumstances, your subconscious can cause you to hallucinate a person who comes and tells you something your subconscious knows that you don't know consciously yet. Um, and it's sort of a survival skill that, that people have that's a real phenomenon. And so that was something that was just up on the whiteboard at some point as a, a, a story point that we wanted to use. And this is what we came to. Are third men always this cryptic? <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah, for some reason, you know, you're your subconscious just can't come straight out and tell you what you need to do sure. at a certain point. Well, it's Your kind of like conscious is a jerk. <laughs> I know it can, it can be. It's playing charades. You know, you you know the answer. You <laughs> want so badly for your partner to guess right. it, but you you can't just tell them that it's. Uh, it you can't communicate with directly Seattle. with yeah. you. Otherwise, it wouldn't be unconscious. So it's a it's a strange <laughs> dynamic that uh, these hallucinations have. Yeah. And uh, from a performance standpoint, uh, there must have been like a lot kind of difficult things to kind of wrap your head around for this particular role, because there are lots of beats. At one point, you're his best friend, you're his new best friend. And then at another point, it's your it's possibly you're this person who was trying to hack the NSA sure, and then sure. possibly something else entirely like, oh, did you poison his dog? We don't know. And so it kind of goes back and forth playing with audience expectations. And and how was that, like, performance standpoint, how was that trying to get your head wrapped around that? It's, you know, it, as much as possible, I think that you've got to give it to the editors and give it to the writing and give it to the music to do to do all the sinister things for you. So in the actual scenes with DJ, in those moments, I tried to play it as simply and straightforwardly as possible. You know, he has a desire for a friend. I'm going to mirror that desire for a friend. I'm going to, you know, if we... There's so many lines, like... You know, we have much in common. All these things. And that his are really... true motive is to help him. I yeah, mean, he, he's a projection of his subcon, of the other guy's subconscious. So he 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 has a clean heart in all this. There's just certain things he can and cannot do. Yeah, you know, uh, he, he talks about like you know how easy it is to kill humans or how many different ways there are to kill right. humans. You can't say that in a creepy way. You just <laughs> like the line is already creepy. The work uh, the work is being done for me. You just got to say the line, and you know that the context and the music and the editing and everything is going to make it creepy. Well, there's a lot of really good subtle acting in there between you and DJ sure. um, as well. I mean, it was it was hard to. Um, hide the ball like we you know want, wanted to be if you went back and thought about it all that it's all consistent and true with what we reveal at the end but at the same time keep you from guessing making it too obvious uh, or at least letting you feel like it wasn't stupid that you guessed it was that you were so smart <laughs> that you guessed you know uh, um, in, in that category but um, Connor was somebody who came in and read originally for um, a for the uh, Citizen Z role, and mm. uh, you came in very close for that, and then you also read for Murphy. I read for Murphy. Um, and so, as soon as this role came up, um, and I knew it was going to be a really, you know, tough kind of technical thing, and somebody had to be as good as DJ, um, you know, who's fantastic. Um, uh, you were, you know, you were on our list right from the beginning. Like that's who. No, I go. We're going to get that Connor. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> you butter me up too much, Carl. No, well, and we'll have to disguise you somehow and bring you back. Uh, yeah. Future season. <laughs> Well, I am curious, actually, because uh, filming for up at the NSA headquarters, you know, uh, for that those particular set pieces, it's a little bit different than, you know, with the rest of our crew who are out and doing field shoots um, every day. So how, you know, I, I imagine that that process is very difficult, even though it's still, or at least... There are different difficulties that you have to work with, um, you know, working on a closed set as opposed to being out well, in the exposed and, environment. And DJ shoots all of his, we don't shoot his stuff with every episode. We get like, save up like four episodes worth of material and shoot it all at once. 
um, in really long days. And it's very hard for him because a lot of it is he doesn't have the other person to play to ever. Um, you know, it's just like the first AD reading it like a first AD, not like the other <laughs> actor, um, to him. And, um, and it's really hard. And, and a lot of it is looking at monitors and, and, you know, and saying, come in Delta X-ray Delta <laughs> over and over and over again. Sure. Um, acting off of a dog who doesn't yeah. particularly like you at all. <laughs> uh, but we have a lot of we have a lot of cool we have a lot of cool stuff uh, planned for him uh, next season and season two where he gets out. Well, oh. some, some characters are going to find their way to him, and oh. um, and he's going to have some problems after when you see oh. our season finale where it leaves everybody. Uh, you'll see he's in quite a pickle. Um, oh, do tell. Do tell. <laughs> no, yes, girl. Can't give away too much, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, er- everybody, exclusive? everybody's up in the air at the end. We'll just say that um, oh. as to whether they're coming back or not. Well, looking forward to that. But we we do get. I I really liked this though. You know, just kind of this very introspective, but still like the danger is real type of episode. What did you guys think? I thought uh, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with uh, especially Murphy's storyline getting. <laughs> yeah. like, oh my god! So. <laughs> He just got so dark that, like, I'm like, yeah. At one point, I'm like, oh my god, what is wrong with you? But on the other side, I'm like, this is good. This yeah. is Team fun. survival over here is like, <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm fine. Far away from I'm that fine. side of the table. If you gotta okay eat people, if you gotta eat people to survive, that's one thing. It's another to like steal food from a child. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> but oh, that's the thing. Okay. And Carl and I were discussing this before. We, you know, you've got to question morality in a totally different context than we can have conversations about morality now in the non-zombie apocalypse. You know, yeah, just the that, regular yeah. apocalypse. Yeah, after a few billion people have died um, as zombies, so um, I guess morality is a little different. And if you think about his his ethical dilemma there, um, and you got out a whiteboard and did the logic of it, you know, you can make an argument that he did the right thing, that it was the good of the many over the safety of the few. Um, and it was more important, even though it's self-serving, it's more important that he survive and make it to California. And- he might well, save the whole world by taking food from a small child. And that they had very little chance um, going forward anyways. Yeah. That was sort of his, conclu- you know, the math in his head as he's um, calculating all of this. Well, at least so, he reunited true. the family with their father. You know, I'm that's glad all. You we don't. We don't but in, ways, in some ways, maybe that was the. You know, if you looked at all the things that were possible going to happen to them, mm. that might be the least bad thing. Yeah. At <laughs> the end, I think know, we don't. So. We don't know what happens when that do- dad goes in there. I think Murphy He's has been a moment. protecting him so far. So. Sure. Yeah. There's clearly like a little two-step. Uh, he's going to eat him. He's going to eat him. Yeah, but, it's really but funny if you've ever been to Horror Nights. Nice. <laughs> That's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> They'll hug for a little bit in kisses, but the kisses might turn vicious and become more like bites. Well, the <laughs> original Love last bites. shot of the show was supposed to be the little girl looking up and going, Daddy! And that was oh! 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 oh, wow. That's 8,000% worse now. Now I feel now. bad. That's Jeez. not what we did. I'm guessing. Oh, my Because, yeah, I'm probably so reaction like that <laughs> Man, I'm wait curious to see episode 111 oh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it I'm curious it's, who's, who's, who's it's all just... about orphans and just getting <laughs> I'm actually curious. it kind of is but uh, is it just... one all... oh, never mind. go ahead Zach uh, well I'm curious whose decision that was to change it was that on your guys on the just the creative side or did like yeah, network... that's, just, yeah that's just yeah me probably um, going How's back that? and forth about yeah what to do just like that's too much you <laughs> had a hard well, to see I don't even know if it was too much or if it was um just where the episode felt like it ended, um, you know, although some people, yeah, it, it did really bother people, but um, <laughs> I think in the end it was just we wanted to end on Murphy and be yeah. there with him and see that moment. And it just, even as chilling as going to the little girl would have been, we just, it wasn't as good as going off of him, I guess. No, but, it wasn't really because we good. chickened out or yeah. <laughs> Because if I'd heard that reaction, that's exactly what I would have. I would have well, that site seals it there. The little yeah. girl looks up. Yeah. It well, would have been a really daddy. good Marvel style post credit stinger. Mm. Right, yeah, yeah. One last little. I don't know that Marvel has stooped to quite such a morbid uh, stinger. I, I like the, I the know, shawarma man. stingers a little bit better. Yeah. We're only well, a few years away us, from. They showed us Howard the Duck. I think they've 
kind of. We're only a few years away from the Marvel Zombies universe, Ty. Uh, <laughs> God forbid they're already doing Civil War. <laughs> You're not excited not about that? No. <laughs> what? They don't have the character. Okay, this is a completely different it discussion. Is. We don't Guys, have this time. Before, before we get the, the little sound effect from the booth saying we've wandered on off topic, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's go back yeah. to what's actually going on in this episode. For more, you so. can follow up with me and Megan on Agents of <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D. Tuesdays. Or you can just catch me on Twitter and ask me to explain myself, <laughs> which I will at length. <laughs> Make a vlog about it. It's all right. But <laughs> anyway, complain at the camera so for half an hour. So while we have Citizen Z going through, you know, this battle with his self, with his subconscious, the rest of our crew is dealing with the fact that they used all of their water, basically pouring it into their truck in the last episode to get the radiator going again. And so now their truck is broken down. They're out of water, and they're basically out of options because they're all exhausted. They've gone. I think somebody meant. Uh, I think it was Doc that mentioned three days without mm-hmm. water and that's the point where you start dying yeah you, you can the human body can survive for three weeks without food a week without water is pushing it it's more like four or five days if you're lucky yeah so they're at the point of bodily function shutting down i'm a writer i do a lot of research <laughs> But anyway, uh, so we we do have our our lead characters who normally take charge and, you know, are like, let's get Murphy to California. They're all, like, just lying down in the street, (laughs) basically. Just like, oh, I just want to sleep because there's nothing else that they can really do. And this is when we get Cassandra seeing, you know, a brightly colored can and reaching for it and... No, it turns out she's hallucinating those bright colors and it's, it's a rusty tin can. So that's where we lay the groundwork for, hmm, hallucinations in this episode. That's going to be a thing. Which, it, it actually was a pretty brilliant piece of foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of fun. Um, it, that, that's Dan Merchant, the, the writer on that. He, he did a lot of that in the, uh, uh, the first draft or two of the uh, episode. And um, there's, you know, so many people add so many good things along the way. Even the visual effects guys making the can change and things like that. Because it was just a rusty can. Um, initially um, all that goes into building in all the little kind of moments and hints and stuff that winds up in and gets thrown out and gets changed because we're going so fast and it's such a low budget crazy production model that we operate under it's it's amazing that they come out at all in the end. <laughs> it's, um, so when it all works, it's great. You know, that's like really nice. Thank you. Yeah, it definitely worked. And but it is kind of funny, you know, before we get this really dark stuff with Murphy, it's kind of funny seeing him the most chipper of the group. Everybody else is on their last legs. They're running on fumes. And we've got Murphy up and around, you know, kind of being really smiley and kind of like, okay, guys, like, this is fine. Let's go. He's got his little running. Uh, <laughs> running. I, for me, I watch the show to see Murphy run. Uh-huh. It's just, there's a moment in, you know, FUBAR where he runs away after. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just solid gold. He's hilarious. With that coat and everything <laughs> yeah. like oh, that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he like kind of, oh, the way that that man as an actor watching another actor's work, the way he uses that coat, oof. Oh, he, uh-huh. he gets it. Like he, uh, he gets it. Well, there's a great. He does a great uh, uh, turn running when in uh, episode six when he uh, uh, lets the zombies eat the lady. They run past him. It's mm-hmm. one of the first times he realizes that the zombies don't see him as a, a human. Um, and he runs down the hall and he just does just does a totally comedic turn. <laughs> yeah, you know, where he slides and then he just like yeah. But it's not, <laughs> it's like not hokey and it's, and it's not over the top. He like totally, totally sells it totally he, on point. Yeah, it, it's totally realistic when he I does it. I don't know how no, he does it. <laughs> I'm gonna steal his secrets. No, Are you a fan? Yeah. Keith, Keith is excellent. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a great job with that role. He's yeah, a good he, people. Especially like the more and more we find out about more uh, about Murphy, the more and more you appreciate his performance because there's just so much going on with this guy at the moment. Well, the more he, yeah, I think, the more he starts turning into a zombie. If my theory, I'm not gonna look. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, if, us, if he does turn out to be uh, sl- just, it's basically just slowing the virus down. Um, I think this is just, it's just one more step at a time. I don't know. I like the idea of him becoming like the king of the zombies. <laughs> Zombie <laughs> Jesus. Well, like, and I also think at this point, he's been known to steal other people's canteens and drink other people's water. We've seen this before. So that's also probably another reason he's okay. <laughs> he's had more water than the rest of them anyway. Oh, well, no. the reason he's he's not like dehydrated, I think that's yeah. it's purely the zombie in mm-hmm. him. I'd zombies say, don't need water. I'd uh, say so six of one, half a dozen of the other. 
But, uh, Ray, you <laughs> No, I was just going to say, like, I love how his character is becoming more confident throughout the season. And in the first, what was it, the second episode when he's stuck in the car with Doc playing Go Fish and he's scared <laughs> and mm-hmm. he's, high, like, he's just freaking out. To me, I was like, ah! Grow up hair, come on! <laughs> and the zombies like, were now still he's... coming after him at that point too. Six yeah. is where we see them start ignoring him. Right. So that is a turning point. Yeah. So I just love how he's becoming yeah. confident and yeah, he's becoming a man, zombie man, <laughs> team survival. He's not becoming a man. The zombie, zombie man. man. Yeah. That was that was the hard thing in casting this role was getting somebody who could play both sides of Murphy because he does mm-hmm. start out so comedic relief. Uh, guy that you hate and he's gonna you know he's gonna grow into something completely totally different um, by season two so king of the zombies uh, <laughs> we'll sure. see we'll have see. you guys put some money on this on the table <laughs> we've never we've never made uh, we, we make predictions every now and then if we have time at the end of the show but I don't think we've ever like put <laughs> money down <laughs> is what, that dollar? zombie Jesus or king <laughs> of the zombies that's it <laughs> it's it's all cash zombie Jesus <laughs> <laughs> when the pot gets big enough you know let us know on the side yeah, yeah exactly can, uh, would you like to start your dollar and raise you a pen I have water. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have this one of a kind souvenir cup yeah. from After exactly. TV. <laughs> but so Do we you just turn that accent on. Is that just a thing? Yeah. Oh, the the Russian accent. Yeah. Um, was terrifying to do. <laughs> uh, I got a call from my agent, and I had auditioned for these guys a uh-huh. couple times in the past, and she said, uh, "So, how's your Russian accent?" And I said, "It's horrible. It's, <laughs> it doesn't exist." And she was like, okay, cool. Just uh, don't tell anyone else that. And uh, <laughs> you're going to audition for this character. And uh, I booked it and then w- spent the next, I think I maybe had five days before we started shooting, uh, spent the whole time just reaching Wait, out. Wait, you're not Russian? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, man. I mean, my mom's. Uh, they told me you were Russian. Well, a lot of, a lot of lies in this business. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, and so I just like went to took to the internet and put out a call to all friendly Russian speakers who have a heart to give me a hand, uh, and just spent every day in these like long. You crowdsourced your. Uh, I did, um, yeah. Accent. <laughs> part, of a, part of a franchise of uh, movies about D and D that has a kind of world worldwide audience, and so through them, I was able to find fans that were Russian, and I was like, hey. You want to just talk to me for a couple <laughs> hours a day for the next week? And yeah, and I found a couple people who were just fantastic. And I, we would find a time where St. Petersburg and Seattle lined up in time zones. And That's we, so cool. About yeah, two in the morning. Did, did, did you, you learn any Russian while, while you were going through this process? You know, I did because I had questions about cultural differences. You know, there's that moment in Inglorious Bastards where he holds up the, the American mm-hmm. three and not uh-huh. the German three. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't re- reveal any sort of cultural ignorance in that sense. And so I, you know, asked about this and that and started trying to learn some Russian words in case maybe there's a moment we could throw it in. And it was very, the consensus uh, every time was, you should definitely not say that on television. <laughs> it's quite, quite obvious that you're not, <laughs> you're not actually Russian. Yeah, well, yeah. you have an out anyway because your citizen's is subconscious. So there's exactly. no way right. he would exactly. know any That's of that. Right. So day one, I was... Just what did he expect to hear? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I was on set and I was, you know, like still had those day one nerves and nerves about the accent as well. And uh, I overheard, I think it was someone on the crew and DJ talking about the accent and how authentic it needed to sound uh, and how authentic it was sounding. I don't think they realized uh-huh. that I was listening in. And they were just like, um, uh, I, I mean, it doesn't need to sound great. It's, it's, it's a figment of his imagination. You know, you get away with a lot. <laughs> Well, that does take a little bit of the pressure off. Yes. You over-prepared. Yes. <laughs> but... But that's still awesome, and I do have a couple more questions for you regarding this role. But before we move on with the episode, guys, I want to talk to you really quickly about iTunes. Folks, thank you so, so much for everybody who goes to iTunes to rate and leave a comment. We love talking to the people on YouTube also about this Uh, If you want to support us with what we do, uh, because the best way to let our bosses know that you like the Z Nation After Show is to go to iTunes, leave a rating and a comment. Five stars, we hope. Not ten or fifteen, but five. (laughs) All of the stars. Every star. As many stars as you can. Pull them down. Because it lets our bosses know that you like this show. They put out over eighty hours of content a week for you for free. So really it's the the people behind the scenes don't sleep. The booth people live here. 
<laughs> let, let, let's be real. They live here. So it really means the world Shamed when you... It the it's true. <laughs> uh, it really means the world. Oh, uh, and Zach has a couple shout outs we for have, you. We have one shout out. Yay! This week <laughs> to uh, SLH236 says, love it. Five stars. Yeah. Great podcast for a fun show. Love your guests. <laughs> Yay. Yay. See, they love you. Yeah, almost more love going over to the couch than <laughs> yeah. it is to the table. What do you mean almost? <laughs> <laughs> and we're totally cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> but but anyway, guys, you know, please leave a comment on iTunes. You might just get a shout out on the show. So getting back to the episode, I want to know why, what part of Citizen Z's mind, What? why an astronaut? It, you guys had anything in the world that you could have pulled from. Uh, why an astronaut? Why a Russian astronaut? Not even an astronaut, a cosmonaut. Yeah, there we well, go. Well, sort of, I, I think it was just in order to, thinking of who could possibly wind up there. What uh, Under what excuse um, uh, would he, uh, his mind concoct, you know, may, I mean, it could be an Eskimo or a hunter, something that had to make sense to the audience too and seem, you know, vaguely science fictiony and it seemed like something the audience would want to happen would would buy into easily because they want to see where it's going to go it seems like an interesting mix uh, that's a lot more intelligent than my response which <laughs> would have just been that it's awesome <laughs> Why, it's, it's, yeah it's a cosmonaut in the that, zombie apocalypse in the an arctic spy base and the, and the uh, end yeah what's the coolest thing that could happen so. <laughs> i am a little it's kind it is kind of sad that he didn't turn out to be real because they could have created their own little sitcom like the author <laughs> right <laughs> no. so, spin-off that'll be the uh, web show yeah so does that mean the vodka doesn't exist for him Oh, well, there is vodka really important up there. Maybe I think he's vodka. been drinking. So. I want to know who was playing, what was it, Left for Dead? <laughs> oh, th- can I tell a little story about yeah, that? Please, it, please in the script, do. it was Left for Dead. I think it ended up being Dead Rising. That's right. <laughs> and this isn't quite Left for Dead. What is it? <laughs> so the little TV magic going on, Citizen Z's booth is a built room inside of this much larger warehouse, and it's quite small. And so filming scenes in there, we have a crew. It's about the size of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we, which when I watched this show, I thought it was much bigger. Uh, Again, TV always, magic happening. It always <laughs> looks way bigger on TV. Right? Uh, to everything, you know, <laughs> everything. Um, so we've got a lot of people in Spokane in the summer in a tin coal refinery of some sort. Right, the exterior building, yes. And we are ready to shoot the scene. We're running a little bit behind, so we were like, we can't be wasting time. we got to move. Uh, and we put in this Dead Rising CD, and the script calls for us to be hacking away at zombies, and the game starts. But unbeknownst to any of us, the game starts with an unskippable tutorial sequence <laughs> where your character like has to learn how to play the game, essentially. And so I was there with the controls in a tiny room full of like 25 guys who are kind of on the clock being like, okay, okay you got to eat the pizza. Click, click B, eat the pizza. Now eat the bagel. Good, good. And I was like, okay, okay. And running forward. <laughs> and then the zombie, and I'm like watching my health tick down to one little square. And if I die, as happened a couple of times, we have to start from the beginning. And so, you know, I went in with my anxiety about the accent and, you know, not wanting to go up on my lines. And but I your ended up. gaming skills. Yeah, that was what I was really put to the test. I was, you know, but. Not much of an RPG I represented, person. <laughs> I represented all those. Uh, all those hours in front of the N64. I they just hope we off. got the rights to the game now that I hear this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we did. You did. You did. That was very, made explicitly clear on set. <laughs> I imagine so. And Dead Rising's interesting because I think one of the things about it is that it's known for its very unique weapons. And that's something that Chainsaw I think gun. it has in common <laughs> mm-hmm. with this series and like the Z-Whacker. <laughs> Chainsaw like gun. That. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, this was, this was a very interesting episode. And... One thing I also wanted to know, what was it like having to film in that astronaut suit? Because that did not look comfortable. <laughs> like, <laughs> <at all. laughs> uh, Well, like I said, it was toasty. Um, so I think that there were a couple different model uh, models of spacesuits that the customers could have ordered. One of which, if you rented that suit, you had to also rent a technician who would come with the suit because it presented a major health hazard. This technician had to put the suit on the actor and really? stay there. Yeah, because you could like, because it was, it, you know, it's a functioning spacesuit. You can't breathe or move. So that I was a real spacesuit. We went like a lateral step to the side of that <laughs> one that didn't require constant maintenance for fear of death. 
Um, <laughs> that's good. That's good. We wouldn't have wanted you to be undead on set. For zero gravity. Yeah. So on, on, when you're on Earth, it's just like a big immovable. You know, yeah. And I'm already, body. my attention span, I'm already kind of just like, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, so a couple of interesting um, challenges, we'll say, to that suit was um, the from the inseam to the top of the helmet was like three crucial inches too short oh. so it just like <laughs> compressed me and i spent the whole time kind of waddling around like this and you can kind of see when you watch it the visor is up here a little bit and i keep trying to poke my head out of it <laughs> and then you know we'd have you know we'd have our fight scenes and all of that um <laughs> but it was the i mean the 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 costume crew uh lisa and rebecca and everybody uh-huh. were a- angels they were heroes uh, and they were just always around. We've had a checking. bunch of those suits, different suits. We have a uh, episode with radiation coming up where we had radiation suits that people were just uh, dying in because mm. they were airtight. And the second you closed it up on them, it would fog up immediately. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, there was the little the the visor for the helmet had a it would snap into place. Right. And so we tried to just play with it, uh, resting against the snap and not closing. But there was a lot of action, a lot of moving, and it uh-huh. would snap. And my big old gloves, I'd just be smacking my face <laughs> trying to get it off. And they'd have to come rest. They're very uh, claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the first, so the opening scene between DJ and I is him saying, you know, hands up, go ahead and make my apocalypse. Uh-huh. And I'm not understanding him because he's speaking in colloquial English. And it was very easy to act that because the costume really looks hear him. at him. Yeah, I can't hear a word he's saying. So I was just like, well, hmm, well uh, Director up. yells, cut, and you're just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Lunch, he's still standing out yeah. there. Nobody <laughs> forgot him. Help! Guns! <laughs> I am real! I am real! Oh. Get out of this Anybody feed that hallucination? Yeah. Yeah. Three hallucination. days without water later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hallucination starts hallucinating. Hallucinating yeah. another cosmonaut? We're using them for the body in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a little morbid. I say on a show about a zombie apocalypse. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> what's what's your standard? What is my bar for this? My bar for this is daddy! Right, that's, <laughs> that's as bad as it gets. That's huh? terrible. Man. But anyway, there's actually something After else. After exclusive. <laughs> we actually haven't even touched on the tsunami. Because that was something from the last episode that I, I thought maybe they were just going to kind of skip over. Like, oh, we, we ran away from it. We're good. Um, because it was kind of similar with the zombie tornado. After it hit, you know, there was no more problems. It was done in one episode. I thought maybe that was going to be the case for this past episode. But no, we get them getting hit right in the middle of the tsunami, which was really cool. What did you guys think? I thought it was really interesting that the zombies knew to go east or west away south south away from the winter mm. yeah they're <laughs> migrating from, yeah <laughs> they migrated from canada and i love that we get this backstory that may or may not be true we don't know this guy could just be yeah, making this, stuff up he's drinking random. antifreeze there was totally a zombie <laughs> mountie at one point so that was wonderful <laughs> Was that really? There yeah. was a zombie ma- yeah. Monty. Awesome. Uh, Mountie. I don't know who Monty is. <laughs> One of them was probably named Monty. He may have been Monty the, Monty the Mountie. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. Monty the Mountie. I like you. But uh, yeah, we and we get this very interesting backstory of there was a refugee camp of about a million people. And much like our heroes right now are out of food and water. The same thing happened with this refugee camp, and things just went to hell all sorts of quickly. And then, you know, this uh, basically a million zombies gets up and starts moving, and they they just start picking up more people along the way. And before you know it, it just becomes this like indestructible force that's miles wide that you just can't avoid. And it's snowballing but, as it picks up more people yeah, along yeah, the way. Yeah. But again. The whole theme of this is hallucinations and unreliable narrators. How do we know that this guy is telling the truth? How do we know that this rumor hasn't just come from God knows where? How do we know that, again, he's drinking antifreeze. He could be making stuff up. We don't know. I mean, I think when the ground starts to shake from the amount of zombies coming at you... It's a clear sign that there's, there's something you got to get out of the way of. <laughs> yeah, but I mean the whole, it came from Canada, and here's the specifics. It's like, how do you know that? <laughs> the Mountie hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they just saw the zombie Mountie, and they, they made an assumption. That could have been a dude in a Halloween costume who died at the wrong moment. <laughs> 
I hope if I ever have to be a zombie, I hope I'm wearing something ridiculous and not just the mustache that I have this week. Come on up to Spokane. We'll set you up. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, but come we right before you think you're going to die. So yeah. we can always fulfill this fantasy. We decided last episode that if they ever make it to L.A. and you need zombie hosts, we'll totally be extras. I'll find my way to yeah. Washington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be fun. But I, I do kind of love, because even though this guy's partner gets picked off pretty early, we you know, they do join the, you know, this guy does join our crew for a little bit. And it's so funny because you totally have him pegged as dead from the beginning. <laughs> I thought he was a hallucination. Should have had a red shirt on, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I legitimately thought he was another hallucination. Well, you guys uh, have pulled the wool over our eyes is. before everyone because is. when the couple showed up uh, back from the tornado episode, I totally called it there. I'm like, oh, they are so dead. By the end of this episode they are so dead oh He's the, gonna turn the, the and drill in the head cover. right yeah yeah. yeah yeah exactly so well I... doc's superior medical <laughs> skills came to you i mean duh they survived <laughs> he's they a doctor died. they died <laughs> after the camera moved away you know that oh we're gonna go look for his family despite the fact that as he soon as they walked out of frame room. they got eaten by a zombie <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the zombie that, was that the, murphy that was, was cuddling with your credit scene <laughs> Unless the show needs them two seasons down the line, and then they right. magically survive. <laughs> assume they're dead for now. I just I assume that everyone anyway. who is not explicitly alive with our heroes at the end of the episode and into the next episode, they dead. Well, I well, hope that's not the case because Mac and Addy are running around. And yeah, one of the last also... things you want to see is our guy showing up, pulling up to your compound because it usually doesn't turn out well. For <laughs> yeah. People wherever they have oh, to go. Oh, great! These guys, are, I've been watching these their show. Yeah, Nothing like, good's exactly. gonna happen. To are us. these yeah. the Nothing main characters? This, oh no! <laughs> yeah. They're just as bad as a tsunami. They destroy <laughs> yeah. everything in their way. <laughs> oh, Charles, we're wearing red today. <laughs> like, oh no! The main characters have arrived. <laughs> we had a good thing going here until you showed up. <laughs> yeah. Although, honestly, the compound would have been screwed anyway because Mr. Drank the Kool-Aid made my own religion uh, would have Jacob, started Jacob. this anyway. Yeah, but they just he happened didn't. to show up at the wrong in, time. He didn't show up until the main characters <laughs> yeah. did. That's He's like, oh, okay, it's time for me to go yeah. now. <laughs> it's death o'clock. <laughs> it's my cue. But anyway, Can we have an episode called Death O'Clock next season? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yay! But I do love that, you know, as they're trying to run away from the tsunami, they they have to barricade themselves in this morgue. And so they hop in. Uh, <laughs> they hop into where they keep the dead bodies in the morgue. And, like, we get everyone's internal monologue as this is going on. Except and for 10K, who's asleep. <laughs> I love that he's just like, well, there's literally nothing I can do in this situation. I'm going to take a nap. Well, he's 18. He's I love still that Warren, who's not in one of those cases, she's mm -hmm. in a body bag uh, before Murphy takes off, is just thinking, I really want Alaskan king crab. That sounds really good right now. She's, yeah, she's ordering from a fancy restaurant mm. in her... Uh... Yeah, I hate has... it. I hate it so much. <laughs> that, oh, she got in that body bag. I just... I hate. I mean, I read the episode. I know what happened, but I did not want it to happen. It's just, nope, 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 it's nope, just nope, terrifying. Nope. I mean, like that's the thing for me. One of the things that was so exciting about this episode is that you've got this tsunami happening on such a massive scale, and yet the consequences that are relevant to us are on such a tiny scale. So right. cramped. So cramped. Yeah, yeah, playing with that duality of uh, giant and uh, minuscule, and it's so terrifying that regardless of the scope of the tsunami. This one little death bed is being encroached upon by these dozen, you know, two dozen, three dozen which, zombies. It's horrifying. I'm sorry. Which there's a movie called Deathbed. The bed. That <laughs> the eats. bed that eats. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> it's terrible. Which anyway, situation would you rather be in the body bag or in the little? What are those oh things called? Oh, my God. The in the drawer? No. Oh, yeah, put yeah. me in a drawer, baby. <laughs> Just like, but yeah. there's no handle on the drawer. Yeah, You're yeah. yeah but they're not velociraptors. They don't know how to open <laughs> doors. They know how to knock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's what I mean. Like, the other you... guy broke his open from the inside, though. So they're Didn't not reinforced. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he's yeah, like, he one, two, yeah. down. He was bursting out. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. freaked out and he lost his noise. He broke his door open from the inside and then the zombies ate him. And Doc went right back to listing classic rock I think that that's a, like a really useful tip should the zombie apocalypse present itself is to try to conceive of your life as part of a TV show and decide what kind of character actor you are. Yeah. You have to be like, geez, am I like a 
one episode kind of guy. Like, I got to do things differently. I got to, like, cool it and not try to have any heroic moments because I'm going to die. It's like Galaxy Quest. It's exactly Sam Rockwell. It's exactly what that is. Nice. A little air high five for that one. Yeah, this one. (laughs) Those meta conversations don't always work, though. (laughs) That's when you get into wrong genre savvy territory. When you think you're in the zombie apocalypse, but you're actually in a romantic comedy, and yet you get people killed because you think you're in a horror. (laughs) Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Watch it. If you haven't seen it, it's so funny. (laughs) Best example of wrong genre savvy I've ever seen. But anyway, back to this episode. I, I again, I just loved everyone's internal monologue. Uh, because everybody has their own way of coping with this horror that's going on around them. You know, uh, Doc is thinking, I think he's thinking of... Um, classic like, he's rock. Doing, yeah, he's doing yeah. the classic rock, the lineup of the various versions of the birds, you know, of the band. <laughs> like he's just working, and then he's starting with the kinks when, when he starts up again yeah. at the end, just like trying to remember them. And poor Cassandra's just like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die here. I thought yeah, that was just really don't die. interesting that she was thinking that way those thoughts so for me i feel that her character is very vulnerable and something bad is gonna happen towards her because of those thoughts meanwhile everyone else isn't controlling how they're feeling and freaking out she's the one that's like i'm gonna die oh no i'd like to see more character development for her we haven't gotten anything from her since the cannibals happened Mm -hmm. aside from murphy ships it (laughs) (laughs) she has some good twists coming up yeah but what if it's not as you're saying you know a weakness that's leading to her ultimate demise by that i gotta die what was interesting to me about that is that we have one of the most you know, badass hard rock characters and to have this glimpse into that vulnerability that exists simultaneous to that, that there, it's not, to me, I didn't read it as a moment of weakness and a moment of fear, but that that fear is always present. It it's makes her more line. human and relatable. Exactly. Yeah. Because Courage just being scared as hell and saddling up anyway. Sure. Yeah. And um, actually, it reminded me of a moment from a movie, uh, the Evangelion movie, because there is there is a moment where a character is in a confined space, and it's just about a minute and a half of her just going, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, and then it builds up to this really big, destructive climax, and it's terrible to watch. <laughs> so when she starts thinking that way, and there's a tsunami going on, I'm like, oh no, I don't want this to go that it's way. It's the zombie apocalypse, not the third impact, all right? <laughs> still terrible but anyway um you know murphy strangely enough does come back he does come back to the rescue um as there's one zombie still kicking around he he's like hey buzz off Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the zombie (laughs) listens to him yeah Yeah. (laughs) again king of the zombies and that zombie was the writer of the episode oh really i thought that that was dan yeah Yeah. Yeah. oh man (laughs) he's got a good zombie he's got the whole like (laughs) zombie oh yeah yeah that that chattering that he did was really creepy the whole time i just kept thinking that that blood was gonna drip into to the yeah. body bag and the consent, yeah, <laughs> like, oh, that's gross. Warren's eye. <laughs> and that would have been contamination right there. I always see here's my like overly logical brain. I always have these questions about zombie media, about what uh qualifies as contamination. Talk to yeah. Keith, um, Keith, no, uh, Murphy. Yeah, Keith. Keith. Yeah, Keith. He's yeah. supposedly an expert. He's on the this. expert. Yeah, he he's, knows his stuff. He's, he's the man of lore. Well, honestly, it depends on what you're in. Everything is different. Yes. So, um, you know, if you're talking Romero rules versus like Zombie Land rules, they're going to be mm-hmm. two very different things. We're we basically have... going by Romero rules. Yeah. Every everybody's already infected, so getting a little blood splashed on you or something small you know, it's like not that really gonna doesn't doesn't affect you. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Do you think uh, Murphy would have left them? Because I know there was that moment where he was could have kept walking, but I know he didn't, obviously. But do you think he would? Honestly, think- I think if he thought that they were dead, then yeah, absolutely. Like if he thought that there was nothing he could do and that they were dead, he totally would have left him. But right now, even though zombies aren't attacking him, they're still his best bet to get to California, which... He doesn't have anywhere else to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, theoretically, when he gets to California, and I think he's liking the idea of being the most important person in the world. I think that's really feeding into, you know, his narcissism. But, I mean, they could dissect him, for all we know, when they get to California. (laughs) And Murphy doesn't deal with people very well. And we've seen this time and time again. He can deal with zombies just fine at this point because he's developed to that point. But he doesn't handle people very well. He's a jerk and people attempt to murder him all the time. So he needs essentially an entire team of liaisons to save his ass when he says something dumb. 
That's he true can too. show up looking like a zombie and say, hey, I'm the savior of humanity. And they'll be like, no, you're a talking zombie. But I'm sorry. What were you guys going to say? Uh, well, that's all true. That Murphy is, you know, it's that two-edged sword of his character that he's, um, in some ways, you know, the, uh, the character who's always right. Everything he says, even though it's horrible, he's always correct about the predictions he makes or, uh, you know, when he says in the pilot, um, just leave the darn baby. It's not <laughs> like he's going to grow up and be a fine young man someday. <laughs> He was totally right about that. So that's one of the interesting things about his character is he's he's always right and and he people always take him the wrong way. They don't know which way um, he's really going to go on things, and that's what makes him interesting to watch. He's ruthlessly practical. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. he's well, and he's he's got a job. He's got a key, his job happens to be keeping himself alive, mm-hmm. but he is important if he believes. Um, what they've told him, uh, his main job is stay alive for the rest of humanity, and that's what he's trying to do. He just doesn't have the social skills to make everybody <laughs> like him while yeah. he's doing it. Sentiment can get you killed. Right. Very yeah. low charisma score. But, strangely enough, at the end of this episode, the rest of the group has finally accepted him as a friend. Not, you know, not just, you know, you started off as the mission, but today you became our friend. And I I think that that's very interesting because I think that can change the group dynamic moving forward. This was an awkward way of being like, we're in a relationship now. (laughs) We're boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh Um, We're officially friends. You can Facebook me now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, why do I have to tell them? (laughs) This is all, I don't know what happens later in the episode, so this is speculative. But there's been a lot of talk about how he's doing what he has to because he's his survival is the most important thing to save humanity. Uh But as an audience member, I'm seeing a lot of hints or things that I'm reading as that say that that's not necessarily remaining his ultimate goal that I can see as Murphy in that moment where he starts to walk on and has that water for himself, but then goes back to the morgue. I could very well conceive of a reality in which Murphy marches on, but not to try to get himself to the lab in the California because He's got a different. He's got a different journey ahead. That's true. He but, has people now. But it's also possible that you know, getting to California is the only option he has to stop whatever's happening to him. Correct. Yes. So. I suppose what I mean is that I. I... Oh, that's uh, that's our wrap up music. <laughs> ah, well, I'm being I'm being played off here. We are. We <laughs> all are. It's all right. Um, <laughs> yeah. That I think that that I see him as someone who's fiercely fighting for his own survival, and at the times in which that intersects with a fight to sur- to to lead to the survival of all of humanity, great. And when it's a fight for himself at the expense of humanity, I can justify a character that makes that choice as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, guys, that basically wraps up this episode because we leave with Citizen Z having, you know, having changed the air filters and having saved, you know, pop, poor Pop. Like Britta. You gotta change the air filters <laughs> sometime, you know. The filter. <laughs> and, then, and then Murphy, you know, being, you know, hailed as a hero, but then recognizing that the change is progressing. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, there's no daddy. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's yeah. no cut daddy. with that. Yikes. Thank goodness. But, um... But any final thoughts on this episode? Any any final questions for our awesome guest today? Um, no. 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 No, thank you. Yeah. This is a great. Thank for thank you guys for coming in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for having, having us. And I love yeah. watching your show. You guys are very astute and uh, um, seem like good fans. You get the show, which I <laughs> you know, y'all get I really it. Enjoy. Y'all get it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for putting on such a fun show for us to watch. Yeah. You're welcome. Even though yeah. next week I'm a little bit worried about what's going to happen next yeah. week. Yeah. Are we getting uh, character development for Mac? Or <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> but, uh, or? Uh, or? Yeah. Exactly. Or he's going to die. Stop. Or we you get cruel, character cruel development man. and then he dies. No, come on. But, you can't. It'll be, yeah, Max, no. it'll be Max saying, Daddy. Uh, <laughs> it's too good. I do like, where did you get that necklace? Wow. So anyway. has got some sass on them. Anyway. Where can the people go if they want to find out more about you guys and about the work that you do? Well, they could go to ZNation.com um, uh, and on the Sci-Fi channel. The, uh, sci-Fi.com has a ZNation uh, um, site there. Um, that's the best way to find uh, me anyways and uh, to see all the upcoming stuff and previews and things like that. Cool. Uh, for me personally, uh, I love chatting with people on Twitter, Connor underscore Marks. Um, yeah, let's chat. Cool. 
Zach Wilson, where can the people go if they want to find you? You guys can catch me on Twitter at ThatZachWilson, T-H-A-T-Z-A-C-H-W-I-L-S-O-N, and a ton of shows here at After Buzz. You, I'm sure you've heard the list before. <laughs> Roya. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at hey Roya. that's H-E-Y-R-O-Y-A. You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaxe, that's K-I-A-X-E-T. I'm also on Star Wars Rebels and Arrow. And you can find me on Twitter at The Menguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. I'm also on a bunch of shows here at After Buzz. And before we go, we also want to say a very happy birthday to Zach Wilson. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming on to the show today. It was an absolute blast having you. It was a blast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> had a lovely time. Okay. And thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of After Buzz TV. Buzz, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of After Buzz TV or its owners or principals.